Chapter 22. Richly Rewarding. Do you need a lift? Harold opened his eyes to see the driver of the car leaning across the passenger seat. Yes, I do, Harold replied. Where are you going, the driver inquired. One Cross Street, Warramoo, Harold responded. That's funny, I'm going right next door to you. Get in and I'll take you there. Thank you, I do appreciate your kindness. Harold got into the front passenger seat in the car and the two men introduced themselves. I walked too far from home and became exhausted, Harold explained. What were you doing walking so far? I have a magazine round and today I had more magazines than usual, so I decided to go further, Harold replied. When you saw me sitting in the gutter, I was praying that the Lord would send someone to take me home, Harold added. Soon the car pulled into Harold's driveway. Thank you so much for your kindness, Harold said as he alighted from the car. Don't mention it, the driver replied warmly. Harold watched as the car reversed from his driveway and parked outside the house next door and then turned slowly and walked to his house. Anne met him at the door and he related his story of the morning's events. Together they knelt to thank God for his answer to Harold's prayer. Harold, now more than 80 years of age, and having given more than 60 years of service to the church, continued to take advantage of every opportunity to minister the gospel. In his 80th year, Harold's article on the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire appeared in the Signs of the Times, July 22, 1957. In this article, Harold returned to one of his favourite themes, which was preparation required to meet the Lord in peace at his second coming. The article dealt with the words of John the Baptist in Matthew 3, 11 and 12. After noting the importance of baptism by immersion, Harold turned to the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. He wrote, Why is there need of this baptism of fire? To show this need, let us take another scripture found in Hebrews 12, 19. For our God is a consuming fire. Someday, if faithful, we will be privileged to stand in his presence. We could not do this if we had sin within us, or we would be consumed by his glory. Thus a special work must be done for all who will be saved before that time, and that work will be done by this baptism of fire. This was not mere theory to Harold. The refining of his own character retained its pressing immediacy as he drew closer to the end of his life. He had always trusted God and rested in his promises. For years, Harold repeated the 91st Psalm to himself before going to sleep each night. His relationship with God was close, but he wanted a deeper relationship. Harold sought to ensure that there was nothing in his life that would separate him from God. Harold and Anne also found time to visit their children and their families. Uncle Stanford and Auntie Dulcie lived on a farm to the rear of our house, and when Grandpa and Nana visited, they were close to both families. Uncle Eric and Auntie Mary lived on the other side of Brisbane, so a visit to Queensland enabled them to see three of their children and their families. Once Grandpa sat and talked with me about things that I liked to do, it was a time when I played cowboys and Indians with my neighbourhood friends. His blue-grey eyes twinkled as he said, when I was a boy, there were cowboys and Indians. Grandpa Harker preached at my church. He had a little clipped moustache and a clerical collar, and spoke quietly but earnestly to the congregation. He was not very tall, but he stood very straight. He spoke to Nana Harker in a kindly manner. They held hands. Harold enjoyed woodwork and he continued to make children's swings to sell. He used the proceeds to raise funds to support worthy students to gain a Christian education. Harold continued his ministry to the poor and needy, often giving away furniture or clothing to those he considered in need. Harold believed strongly that his treasure was in heaven and not on earth. On September 1, 1959, an article by Harold was published in the Signs of the Time. In this issue stated, Harold C. Harker, an ardent sign supporter, whose article Two Mystic Ladders appears on page 11, is officially on the retired list. He is perhaps the most retired minister in Australia, but in each place in which he retires, he usually establishes and builds a church then moves on to another needy area. In this article, Harold returned to another favourite theme, salvation. Christ as the connecting ladder to heaven represents justification or forgiveness, and Peter's ladder depicts sanctification or growth in holiness. 
The first was obtainable in a moment, but the second was the work of a lifetime. Once faith in Jesus is established, we are to climb the ladder to heaven, rung by rung, adding heavenly characteristics as we climb. On April 26, 1960, Leela, Harold's sister, passed away in her 86th year and Harold assisted Pastor W.G. Turner at the graveside in Kurumbong. After training as a nurse at Battle Creek Sanitarium in Michigan under the direction of Dr. J.H. Kellogg, Leela returned to New Zealand and worked on the staff of the Christchurch Sanitarium for many years. Later she engaged in private work in her profession until she was no longer able to work. In her obituary, Pastor Turner wrote, in part, Sister Harker was an earnest, self-sacrificing Christian and was affectionately esteemed by all who knew her. She rests while waiting the call of her Lord, whom she joyously and consistently served for 70 years and more. A year later, on May 4, 1961, Pastor Turner conducted the funeral for Laura Harker, Harold's sister and the third of the Hastings Five to pass away. Laura graduated from the nursing class at the Sydney Sanitarium in 1904 after spending a year at Avondale College in 1901. Laura spent much of her life in nursing in New Zealand and Australia. Pastor Turner wrote in her obituary in part, with her sisters Leela and Florence, both earnest workers in the cause and now deceased, she was always faithful to her Lord. Laura was laid to rest at Kurumbong. Harold and Norman attended the funeral. Norman lived nearby. Now, only Harold and Norman remained of the Hastings Five. All had remained faithful to the decisions that they had taken at Hastings, New Zealand in 1893. Norman spent many years coal portering in New Zealand and Australia. He also wrote a great number of poems, some of which were published in the Australasian record. One of his poems was set to music by Pastor A.W. Anderson, and appeared in the church hymnal as number 97, Lord of the Ocean. It originally appeared as O Lord Omnipotent in a collection of 21 of Norman's favourite poems entitled Time's Grand Finale. This poem appeared on the front page of the Review and Herald, May 11, 1933. Each of the Hastings Five contributed immensely to the cause they loved. As coal porters, they were responsible for placing thousands of books in homes across New Zealand and Australia. As nurses, Leela and Laura helped many to recover their health and to develop a better understanding of the principles of good health, thus introducing them to new possibilities in their lives, including the joys of the spiritual life. Harold's evangelistic and pastoral work resulted in hundreds of decisions for the Adventist faith and the building up of the church in many places. These results were richly rewarding. All the sacrifices seemed as nothing compared with the blessings that they had been privileged to bring to the lives of so many. Harold's faith remained strong. He continued to take an active interest in the prosperity of the cause he loved, and his heart yearned for the culmination of all of his hopes. On May 8, 1961, the Australasian Record published a sermon by Sister White, previously published in the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, July 31, 1888. It was entitled, Cast Not Away Your Confidence, and emphasized the importance of living our lives with reference to the great event, the second advent of our Lord in all the glory of heaven, and the importance of bringing this to the attention of all who live upon the earth. Readers of that issue of the Australasian Record were directed to the article. We urge all our readers to thoughtfully ponder the solemn address by Mrs. E.G. White in this number of the record. Pastor H.C. Harker obtained this from Pastor A. White, Secretary of the Ellen G. White Estate, and both draw our attention particularly to the paragraph commencing, The Hour Will Come. Harold's pastoral heart was as strong as ever. Many years later, I visited a church in Canada with my wife Cecily, and we met Pastor Bill Cook, a retired pastor who had worked for many years in Australia. Pastor Cook, an Englishman with a magnificent baritone voice, sang for Pastor George Burnside's missions before leaving for Canada in the late 1960s. When he found out who I was, he told me that my grandfather would look under rocks for souls. Harold's sense of duty never left him. In mid-1962, Harold entered the Sydney Sanitarium and Hospital 
now the Sydney Adventist Hospital, with a chest complaint. While there, Harold continued to give Bible studies to other patients and to praise God. Praise came so readily to his lips that if you visited his home at Warramoo, you were likely to hear his little budgie Peter say, Praise the Lord, Peter. One day the budgie escaped and a neighbour came and told Harold that it was up a tree in her yard. When asked how she knew it was Harold's budgie, she replied, It sang in your voice, Praise the Lord, Peter, praise the Lord. When Jack came to visit his father in hospital, he helped Harold to shave. One day after being in hospital for a few months, Harold looked in the mirror and seeing the gaunt face of an old man, said to the image in the mirror, It's time for you to pass on. It was clear that Harold would never leave hospital. His thoughts turned especially to his beloved Anne and his family. While he was in hospital, his granddaughter, Noreen Allen, was doing nursing training there. Grandpa Harker was very special to Noreen and her brothers, Malcolm and Graham, as he'd been very close to them while their father, Percy Allen, spent the last 10 years of his life in hospital with tuberculosis. One day, Harold walked Noreen around the front lawn of the hospital and told her that his work was done. He talked about her future, the kind of person she should marry, what she should do with her life, and his hope that she would be a worker in the Lord's vineyard. Noreen was distressed to know that she would soon lose her grandpa, but she only adored him more because of his evident interest in her life and happiness. Years later, Noreen was visiting a church in the United States of America with her husband, Lester Devine, when they met a man who became quite excited when he discovered who they were. Harold assisted him financially with his education. The support came from the proceeds of Harold's Swings project. In his last days, Harold's personal concern was that there would be no unconfessed or unforsaken sins in his life that would separate him from God in the hour of his death. He searched his heart and prepared for the end, which came peacefully in hospital on March 31, 1963. Harold was 85 years of age. Pastor Walter E. Batty, Harold's associate from 40 years and more ago, conducted the funeral. Harold's four sons were the pallbearers. As the four men carried Harold's coffin, Raymond said to his brothers, if Dad doesn't make it, there's no hope for the rest of us. Raymond's comment showed the deep respect in which the sons held their father. In Harold's obituary, Pastor Batty wrote, a large number of relatives and friends gathered in the Warunga church and at the graveside in the northern suburb cemetery to pay their respects to one who had endeared himself to all. His long life was fruitful and rich in blessing through his dedicated ministry. As a young man, he dedicated his life to the proclamation of the glorious truths of the Second Advent, and through all the years to his closing days, his ardour and consecrated zeal never flagged. His wife, Sister Harker, three daughters, Laura, Mrs. A. Wood, Winnie, Mrs. Allen, Phyllis, Mrs. Frost, and four sons, Stanford, Eric, Ray, and John, mourn the loss of a devoted husband and loving father. Pastors S. M. Utley, A. Parker, E. R. Whitehead, and the writer were associated in the funeral services. So our brother sleeps until the day breaks and the shadows flee away. When the mighty conqueror calls the righteous forth, saying, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Following the obituary, returned thanks from the family appeared. Sister A. E. Harker and family are deeply grateful for the comfort brought to them at the time of their loss of a beloved husband and father. They request all kind friends to accept as personal this expression of sincere thanks for the beautiful floral tributes and all messages of sympathy too numerous to reply to individually. Particularly do they thank members of the Sydney Sanitarium and Hospital staff, including Dr. C.H. Palmer and Sister J. Colley, for their unremitting care of the loved one during his long illness. On the same day that the obituary appeared in the Australasian Record, April 29, 1963, a life sketch of Pastor Harold Harker by Pastor S. M. Utley appeared, the concluding three paragraphs are reproduced here. In 1909, our brother entered the field of public evangelism, which led to his ordination to the gospel ministry in 1916, over the signatures of Pastor J.E. Fulton, C.H. Watson and M. Lukens. 
He thus had received credentials as a minister for a period of 46 years. His ministry covered every state in the Commonwealth. Pastor Harker officially retired in 1948, but only to take fresh assignments under subsidy in soul-winning endeavour. This later period of ministry extended for 14 years. During this time, he was instrumental in raising up two churches, namely Dora Creek and Warramoo, besides which he spent two years in the granite belt in Queensland. Our beloved brother and fellow minister was deeply esteemed by the laity. His preaching was always characterised by a deep fervour and his ministry by a loving concern for the needy and unfortunate. Truly it can be said of him, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labours and their works do follow them. Postscript. Norman, the fifth member of the Hastings Five, died in 1973 at the age of 94. Anne Harker, Harold's beloved wife, was 99 years of age when she passed away in 1987. All of Harold and Anne's seven children are now deceased. Two of Harold's grandchildren are ordained ministers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, now retired, having served the church in senior administrative positions. Many others remain active members of the church. This concludes the final chapter of the book, Deeply Esteemed, The Life and Ministry of H.C.K. Harker. You've been listening to a production of 3ABN Australia Radio.